Hello students and welcome to the Biology 100 laboratory. This is the video that is, uh, this is a very brief video that's designed to just tell you the mechanics of the course and how the course works. Uh, my name is Greg Doheny, I'll be your lab instructor. Uh, some of you may have had me for, as a lab instructor uh, for previous courses, in which case, uh, welcome back. If not, welcome. Uh, this is me over here. This is sort of what I look like over here. And uh, my email address is jgregdoheny, or sorry, gregdoheny at columbiacollege.ca. I will be holding virtual office hours for this lab every Monday from uh, 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock, which is 1500 to 1700 Vancouver time, using a program called, called Teams, which I will explain in a minute. Uh, I should remind you before we go any further that this video only explains how to do the lab portion of the course. The Biology 100 course has two sections. It has a lecture section and a laboratory section. The lecture section is worth 75% of your mark and it is intended to give you a theoretical background in biology, whereas the lab uh, portion of the course is only worth 25% of your mark, but it's designed to give you some practical experience with biology. Uh, and so make sure that you check to find out what you're supposed to be doing for your theoretical, for your lecture section of the course. Uh, for some of you, I may be your lecture uh, instructor as well, but for some of you, you may have a different instructor who's supposed to be delivering the lecture portion of your course. Okay, so make sure that you check both the laboratory section, which is what this is, and the lecture section to make sure that you know what you're supposed to be doing for both of those segments of the course. Okay, now in order to complete this course as well as the lecture section of the course, you will need to be using three different programs, uh, three different internet management programs. One of them is called CAMS. CAMS is where all of your grades will be stored. Uh, so if you go to the Columbia College website, which is www.columbiacollege.ca, uh, it will allow you, it will show you a menu, what's called a pull down menu on the upper right hand side of the page. And that menu says login. So when you pull down that menu, you will have a choice of several different ways that you can log into the college website. One of them says student portal. The student portal login will take you to the CAMS program. The CAMS program will tell you the names of all the courses that you're taking, as well as the grades that you're getting in each of those courses. Okay, so your grades, your official grades are stored in the CAMS program. And when you log into the Columbia College website under the student portal, you're in the CAMS program. There's another program that you're using that you will use called Moodle. Moodle is what's known as a classroom management program. It's, it's designed to deliver course materials to the student. So most of the course materials, in fact, all of the reading materials and the quizzes and the tests and the videos that you're supposed to be using to learn, they are all stored on the Moodle page. So in order to get into the Moodle program, you go again, you go to the Columbia College website at www columbiacollege.ca and you pull down the menu and instead of logging into the student portal you log into the Moodle page and that will take you to a list of all the courses that you're taking all of the courses that you're registered in and when you click on the biology 100 laboratory it will take you to a page that contains all of the materials that you'll need during the, uh, in order to complete the lab section of your Biology 100 course. It includes reading materials, videos to watch, quizzes to take, uh, windows to submit, answers to exercises, and so on. Finally, if you want to talk to me in person, face-to-face, -face, as it were, virtually, virtually face-to-face -face during my office hours, you have to use a third program called Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is a uh, program that you load onto your computer or onto your phone, and it then uses, it, it will give you a calendar, and uh, it will show you that on Mondays from 3 to 5 p.m., 
you have an office hour and you have the option of coming to the office hour. If you come to the office hour, you simply click on the calendar for that time and the, the Teams program will activate your camera and you can talk to me face to face. I'll, I will have my camera on, but you don't actually have to have your camera on. Uh, I should mention that attending the office hour, talking to me personally during the office hour is not required. It's for your benefit only. Uh, but I'm not, I will not be taking attendance or anything of that nature. Uh, in order to, to use the Teams program, you have to download it onto your phone or onto your computer. Uh, I recommend doing this course with a computer, not a phone, because you can type faster on a computer, you have a bigger screen on a computer. Uh, it's all around, it's generally better to do courses of this sort with a computer. Now, if you don't have a computer, Columbia College has a, a, a loan program where we will loan you the money to buy a laptop computer. So if you want to take advantage of that program, uh, I suggest you get into contact with one of the college counselors and they can tell you about that. Uh, it's basically called an equipment acquisition loan program for students. Uh, so I would recommend having a computer uh, you can borrow money from the college to buy a laptop computer, uh, but still, uh, you, if you really want to, you can do this. You should be able to do this course with just your phone. However, I would not, I would strongly recommend against that. I think you have an advantage if you have a computer. And you need to have a good internet connection. Um, for this course, for the lab section of the course, and particularly for the lecture section of the course, you need to have rapid and good reception, a, a rapid and good connection to the internet. Uh, because the questions, the quizzes and the tests are being sent to you through the internet uh, and your answers are sent back and forth through the internet. So you need to have a good connection because if the, if the connection times out or stalls out and you have to log out and then log back in again, that's, that's a waste of time and you, your marks will suffer for that. So I urge you to find some place where you can use your computer that has access to a good internet connection. If you don't have a good internet connection at home, you might want to do the, uh, you might want to do these sections of the course at an internet cafe or something like that. But I'll leave that in your hands. All right. So, just bear in mind that you're using three different programs in order to complete this course: the CAMS program where your grades are, the Moodle program where all of the course learning resources are, all of the course learning materials. And finally, the Microsoft Teams program, which you can use to talk to me face to face, virtually, as it were. All right. So just to show you again how this is working, uh, we have if you log into the Columbia College website and then you go to the upper right hand corner up here, you'll see that there's a pull down menu. A pull down menu means you click with your mouse or your trackpad and then you hold it and this menu will come down. And then without lifting your finger off of the mouse or without lifting your finger off of the trackpad, you let go, you move down to the student portal and let go. And then that will take you to another window that allows you to log into the CAMS program. On the other hand, if you pull down this menu and then you log in, you, you let go at the Moodle section, that will allow you to log in to the Moodle program where all of the course teaching materials are. So if you log into the Moodle program, it will show you, a, uh, the Moodle page will show you a list of the courses that you're registered in. Uh, and then you click on the one that you're registered in. It will take you to the page that contains all of the learning resources. This is the window that you will see if you want to attend the office hours. This is a Microsoft Teams page. Uh, so this is what you'll see basically if you want to talk to me during the office hours. Uh, as I said, my camera will be on, but your camera does not have to be on. I understand that some people are, are uh, more self-conscious about appear appearing on camera, and it's not actually necessary. It's, as I said, attending the office hours is for your benefit only. It's not required. So you don't have to attend office hours, but if you do attend office hours, you do not have to have your camera on. However, either way, you have to attend the office hours using the Microsoft Teams program because that's the preferred platform for uh, Columbia College to talk to their students. All right, so 
once again, that there are two components to the Biology 100 course. One of them is a lab component, which is what this is, of course, and it's worth 25% of your grade. Right? And the lecture component or the theoretical component is worth 75% of your grade. You may have me as an instructor or you may have another instructor. You should check with your Moodle page to, to find out. Uh, now, here's something that is critical for you to know. It's necessary that you pass both the lecture and the lab component of the course to pass the course as a whole. In other words, if you fail the lab component, you can't pass the course even regardless of how well you've done in the lecture section of the course. You might get 100% of the material in the lecture section of the course, but if you fail the lab section, you fail the entire course. That's a standard policy that all science courses have, that you have to pass both of the sections individually. So even though the lab section of the course may not look that important because it's only worth 25% of your grade, you know, the lecture section is worth three times more, but nevertheless, you still have to pass the lab in order to pass the course. I can tell you as a teacher that there's nothing more heartbreaking than to tell a student that, you know, they've done very, very well in the lecture section of the course, but because they failed the lab, they failed the entire course. That's a, that's a tragedy, and it, that tragedy doesn't have to occur uh, if you pay attention to the lab and treat it with importance. Okay, now, this is what's called a flex, uh, flex course. Columbia College in, uh, invented the flex courses to accommodate students who need a flexible schedule. That means that uh, we would normally be holding classes in person at the college, but because of the COVID-19 pa pandemic, we're unable to get to the college. Some students are remaining in their home countries and other countries overseas. Some students are in Vancouver or in the greater Vancouver area, but they choose not to come to the college because they're concerned about catching COVID-19, which, which is a legitimate concern. If you can avoid it, you, you have that option. So it's your choice. But the flexible, the flex courses are designed to be delivered to students at a distance. And uh, 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 taking into account the fact that students may be in a different time zone from the college. So midnight at Columbia College might be 12 noon in somebody else's in somebody else's location. We have to give you the flexibility of watching the videos whenever you want and submitting the material whenever you want, except limiting it to one day per week. So if you were in the college, we would be taking this. Uh, we would be doing the Biology 100 lab in the Columbia College Biology Lab on Wednesdays at 12 noon, for example. And you would have to, the, the lab would start at 12 noon and then you would, ha, you would I would give you a quiz at 12.05, another quiz at 12.10, and then you would do the lab protocol and then you would submit to me your answers to the worksheet before you left at two o'clock and that would be the end of it. Uh, because this is a flex course, you have the option of doing the quiz anytime you want uh, on Wednesday. So the quizzes have to be done on Wednesday and the worksheet has to be submitted on Wednesday. The answers to the questions on the worksheet must be submitted on Wednesday. Uh, but you can do the you can do the readings anytime. Right? So just bear in mind that your work is due on Wednesday, but I don't care if you if you prefer to do the week the, the work weeks in advance. You could be doing uh, the, the, the lab nine work on the, during the first week, if you have the spare time, that's totally up to you. Uh, and you could submit, you have the option of submitting the work to me anytime between midnight on Wednesday, you know, 12 a.m. Wednesday morning and 11.59 Wednesday night, as long as it's submitted on Wednesday. If you were unable to submit the lab work, you have to tell me in advance because you uh, or you have to you have to tell me uh, fairly quickly that you were sick. Uh, medical reasons being sick, being ill or having a medical reason is the only excuse that we accept for having missed a lab. Uh, now, generally uh, for the labs, if you miss a lab, <clears throat> I will give you a supplementary lab. So it will be the supplementary lab that you can do later will be slightly harder than the one that you would have done if you'd submitted the lab work on time. 
Uh, unfort that's unfortunate, but necessary because if we didn't make the makeup labs harder, uh, everybody would just be putting them off. Uh, so I, I was a student for a long time. And if I were a student in that situation, that's what I'd do if I was given the opportunity. So we have to have some kind of a deterrent uh, to prevent people from missing the lab for frivolous reasons. Okay, so it, it is easiest to do the lab and ahead of time and then submit the answers on Wednesday. If something happens, if you're ill for some reason, you have to provide proof of the illness in the form of a medical note that you, and, and you don't provide the proof to me, you provide it to one of the counselors. The counselor then tells me that they've given me permission to give you a supplementary quiz or whatever. And the supplementary quiz will be more difficult than it would have been if you had written it on the, on the Wednesday. All right, so this is a flexible course. You have all day Wednesday to get your materials into me. Uh, we don't all have to submit them at the same time as long as they're submitted on Wednesday. All right, so what to do each week? What do you do each week? Well, you go to the Moodle page and this, this course is divided into 13 weeks. It's actually 14 weeks, except that the, the 14th week is taken up by the final exams. But the lab, we have our final exam on the, on the 13th week. So the lab, the lab course is divided up into 13 weeks. There is no lab the first week. And the, there's a lab exam on the last week, which is the 13th week. So the first week, of course, this semester starts on September 7th. That's week number one. And then seven days later, the following week, week number two is on September 13th. Week number three is on September 20th and so on. OK, so what you do is you go to the Moodle page, you log in, you go to the Moodle page, and then you scroll downwards until you get to the week that we're currently doing, week three, for example. And then you simply read the list of all the things that you have to do that week. Uh, there are some links, hot links, as they're called. Uh, this is, you know, you look at the at the web page and you see texts that are in blue. Those are called hot links because if you click on them, they'll take you to the materials that you're supposed to be reading or they'll take you to the quiz that you're supposed to be writing. OK, so you go to the Moodle page, you scroll down to the current week and then you do the lab work. Right. So that includes watching some background videos, reading the lab protocol and then doing the quizzes and submitting the answers to the lab worksheet on Wednesday. Right. So you do all of that on Wednesday. And then if you have any questions about the material, you want to talk to me about something, you have two ways to ask me questions. Number one is you can come to the office hours and ask. Number two is you can submit written questions to the uh, uh, what's known as the questions forum. So when you get to the web page, you'll see that. When you get to the Moodle page, you'll see that there's a, a blue link called the questions forum where you can submit written answers. Now, bear in mind that when you submit a written answer or sorry, when you submit a written question, all the other students in the course can see it. But that's an advantage because then I will answer the question in public. I'll give you a written answer in public and then all the other students can see the answer as well. So don't be shy about leaving questions in the questions forum. Uh, many other students may have the same questions and they, they will all, all those other students will be grateful to you for writing the question there because perhaps they were too shy to. Okay, so you log into the Moodle page, you scroll down to the week in question, okay, and you get something that looks like this. So this is what you would see for week three if you were looking at the Moodle page. Right. And you see up at the top here, there's a brief explanation of what the purpose of this week's experiment is. The title of the experiment that we're doing in week three is called Introduction to the Microscope. And the purpose is basically to teach you how to how to use a microscope effectively and also use it effectively without breaking it, because both of those things are important. Uh, many people don't know how to use a microscope properly. So when they get it out, they get it out and they try to focus it. They complain that it's it, it's impossible to see anything through it. Uh, that's usually because you didn't set up the microscope properly. And then some people may break a microscope because they didn't carry it properly or they turned it upside down and they didn't realize the ocular lenses would fall out and they break a very expensive piece of equipment. So as biologists in training, you should learn how to operate a microscope properly. Uh, it's one of the main tools that a biologist uses, right? So 
uh, the first the the lab lab number uh, lab number one is actually about using the microscope. Now, if you look below the preamble, below the introduction, you'll see there's a list of things to do this week, right? and you'll see that some of the links are in some of these writing. The text is in blue. If you click on those blue texts, it will take you to the reading materials or to the videos. Okay, so all of these blue things are blue links that you can click on. All right, let's look at what you're supposed to do each week in greater detail. So there are basically three parts to each lab, and I should mention to you that there are nine labs. Each lab is worth 2% of your grade, and then the final, exam, uh, final la the lab exam in week 13 is worth 7%. So nine labs times 2% each is 18% of your grade, and then the additional 7% brings it up to 25%. So, so the lab in total is worth 25% of your grade. So every week we do a, we do a different lab. And the, uh, the first part of the lab is you are assigned a whole bunch of videos to watch on the YouTube program. I don't know if you're familiar with YouTube. Uh, YouTube is a place where you can store videos. Uh, it's a nice place for us to store videos because, as, I'll exp as I will explain in a minute, you can actually turn on a transcript for YouTube. So as you're watching a lecture or you're watching a video, you can click on the transcript button for YouTube and it will provide a simultaneous written transcript of what's being said. So if the presenter is talking too fast, or they're using words that you want to look up in the dictionary, but you don't know how to spell it, the transcript will give you an accurate spelling for that word, or the transcript will give you a better picture of what the presenter is talking about. Okay, so that's an advantage to storing these videos on YouTube. Okay, so I, each week I give you a few videos that you have to watch on YouTube. I will also give you some questions about those videos. You should look at the questions in advance because the answers to those questions are contained in those videos. So if you sit there watching the videos with the questions in front of you, you can write down the answers as you go through them. So and then the quiz that you're going to write a quiz on the background videos on Wednesday of each week. And in the case of the background videos, I've given you the questions in advance. So you, you should be prepared to answer those questions because you've looked up the answers. The next thing you do is you read the lab protocols for the week. OK, so a lab protocol, once again, a lab protocol is a set of instructions that tell you how to carry out the experiment or to carry out the exercise. Right. Now, if we were doing this in the college, if, if not for the pandemic, we would be doing these experiments in the college and you would be expected to do the experiment. But I should tell you that in case you go to the college in the future, you should know that for, for these biology labs and for the chemistry labs and for the physics labs that we teach at Columbia College, there is no way that you have enough time to read the protocol and do the experiment during the lab period. Lab periods are two hours long. Generally, the lab period is only long enough to do the experiment. You don't have time to read the protocol. So we insist, in fact, we, we require that you, that you read and study the lab protocol before you come to the lab so that when you show up at the lab, you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And in order to make sure that, that you've read the protocol, we give you a pre-lab quiz. So if we were doing this in the biology lab at Columbia College, you would come in at 12 noon or something, everyone would put away their books, and then I would pass out a quiz that asks you some questions about the protocol for the day. And that, you know, so it determines part of your mark and so that gives you an incentive to actually read the protocol ahead of time because you're going to be examined on the contents of the protocol. So that's the purpose of that. Now, the fact that we're not actually you're not actually going to do the lab, we're still going to quiz you on the protocol uh, because it wouldn't be fair to the students who actually have to do the lab. Some of the students are coming to the college this semester and doing the lab. They will be quizzed on the protocol. Part of their mark is determined by how well they studied the protocol. So we have to do the same thing for you as well, even though you're not going to be doing the, the actual protocol. And the final step of 
the protocol. As you're reading through the protocol, you'll notice that there's a video link to a YouTube video that where one of the Columbia College instructors will actually demonstrate the protocol for you. So you don't actually have to do the experiment. This is a virtual lab done at a distance. The best we can do is to have somebody demonstrate the protocol for you visually. And then I give you a set of fake data, as it were. I give you a set of fake results that you're supposed to analyze as if you had collected the data yourself. Okay, so you read the lab protocols, you study the lab protocols, and then you watch the video demonstration, which is being done by one of the Columbia College instructors named Sarah Gomeshi Nobari. And then you have a quiz on the lab protocols as well on the Wednesday. And then you do a worksheet where you, I give you a set of fake data that you have to pretend that you actually gathered the data yourself. And then you answer questions or you do calculations or something like that. There is a little bit of math in this course, but, but nothing that most people can't handle. Uh, I would recommend that you have a calculator though. Uh, so in order to complete the lab, you need a computer connected to the internet, a calculator, and you'll need some graph paper for a couple of the labs. Okay, so then on Wednesday, you submit your answers to the lab exercise and that's it. So let's take a closer look at these links. Okay, so you notice up at the top, we have these blue links that talk about the, the, the background videos. And then there's another one that takes you to the lab protocols. And there's another link that takes you to the lab worksheet. And then there are three links to the quiz on the background videos, right? The quiz on the lab background videos, quiz on the lab protocols, and a place where you can enter your answers to the, to the questions on the exercise for the week. All right, so let's, let's look at what you see if you click this link. If you click this link, it will take you to a document that has a, a whole bunch of addresses for YouTube movies. This gives you some background information. And then if you scroll down a little bit farther, you'll see that I've given you some practice questions. You're supposed to look for the answers to these practice questions as you are, uh, look to the answers, look for the answers of these questions as you're watching the background videos because you will be quizzed on them. And here's an example of a, a, a video on YouTube, right? You see the logo up here, YouTube, of course, right? Now, one thing I want to point out to you about watching YouTube videos, I just mentioned it, but I'll mention it again. Down here, where these three dots are, if you click those, it will give you some more options. And one of the options is that you have the option of turning on a transcript so that as I'm narrating or as the presenter in the video is narrating or as Sarah is narrating, the YouTube will provide a simultaneous transcript, a written transcript, not exactly subtitles. The, the text appears to the side on the right hand side of the video. But if, if I'm talking too quickly or Sarah is talking too quickly or we're using a word that you don't understand and you want to be able to look it up in the dictionary, but you don't know how to spell it, simply look at the transcript. So I, I advise everyone to turn on the transcript so that you can, uh, you can hear it and you can read it much more easily. Okay. What happens if you click on the protocols? It will take you to a list of the protocols. So you have to study the protocols because you will be quizzed on the protocols, but I, I will not be giving you answers in advance. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, for instance, there's an enzyme lab, which is lab five, uh, where, or sorry, lab uh, three, I believe, uh, a lab on enzymes where you test the activity of enzymes at three different pHs. And it, for example, I would ask you which, which are the three different pHs that we test the enzymes in. So you would have to know that. Generally, those types of questions, when I ask them, they are multiple choice questions. So it's not, not terribly hard, but you do have to have studied the protocol in order to answer them. And then finally, there's a link to a video of Sarah Gomeshi Nobari, one of the Columbia College instructors who is demonstrating the experiment for you. Uh, here you can see Sarah standing in the actual Columbia College biology lab. Uh, I hope you get to go to the actual lab someday when the pandemic is over. Uh, it's, we have a great lab at Columbia that contains all kinds of fancy equipment and models and uh, 
uh, anatomical models and you can see behind Sarah there's a there's a model of DNA deoxyribonucleic acid uh, so you so you watch Sarah do the demonstration and then you go and take the test on Wednesday and as I said the final part of the exercises is that there's a worksheet where you have to answer questions or do calculations and then there there will be a place on the website the Moodle website where you can submit your answers okay so these three here taking the taking the quiz on the background videos taking the quiz on the protocols and taking and, and submitting your answers to the exercise all have to be submitted on Wednesday but you have the whole day Wednesday in order to submit them now if you go to the quiz quiz one for instance on the background videos if you go there right now you'll notice that there's a message that says the quiz is not open until Friday September 11th okay this is actually from a from a previous semester so the date is funny but what that means is this is just telling you that you're not allowed to submit your answers you're not allowed to take either of the quizzes and you're not allowed to submit your answers to the worksheet until the assigned day which is on a Wednesday right so you you can do all of the work ahead of time but you have to submit the work on Wednesday now when the test actually does open meaning that you have the ability to get into it you start the test and a timer will begin and the timer will give you a set amount of time to complete the test so that means that you can start the test anytime you want to on Wednesday but once you've started it you will only be allowed one attempt you'll only be allowed to attempt the quiz once and you'll be given a limited amount of time so you'll see a timer appear that says uh, for the uh, for the background videos we have a 15 minute timer for the protocols we protocol quiz we have a 10 minute timer and then I give you an hour to submit your worksheet answers uh, so you'll see that the timer the clock is running and you have a certain amount of time to answer the questions and that, of course that's the way it is with all questions I mean all 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 quizzes and exams you know anybody could get an A plus in a course if you gave them an indefinite amount of time to do the quiz that's why we limit the time so in order to do well on a quiz where you have very very limited amount of time you have to know the material very well and that's what we're trying to find out we're trying to find out how well you know the material do you know all of the material and if you do how well do you know it how long do you have to think about it before you can give an answer right so that's one of the ways that we uh, judge gifted students we separate gifted students from regular students by uh, generally by restricting the amount of time that you have to answer uh, questions on a quiz so once you start on the quiz most of the questions are multiple choice uh, some of them are not some of them are short answer questions but most of them are multiple choice um, and so you click on these buttons then when you're finished with all the questions you you uh, click on a button that says finish says finish and then the computer will prompt you three times to say are you really sure you want to finish are you really sure you're done and so you click yes I'm sure yes I'm sure yes I'm sure and then your answers are submitted I should mention that sometimes the clock will run out before you're finished and students are worried that maybe the computer didn't save their answers I I can assure you that actually the answers are saved automatically about once per minute so that means that if you did if you finish all the questions let's say that you're the clock is running and you're about to run out of time you've answered all the questions and the timer suddenly cuts you off and you didn't have time to click the submit answers button your answers were being saved all the way through the test except the last minute whatever questions you answered in the last minute may not have been saved so the the moral of that is the message behind that is make sure that you finish all the questions and click on the submit button if you don't click on the submit button most of your answers will be submitted automatically but the last one or two that you answered may not be because the computer didn't have time to save them so just bear that in mind that's that's a flaw of the system there's nothing any of us can do about it so just make sure that you click uh, finish and submit for all of your quizzes now after the quiz is closed namely Thursday from Thursday onwards you can go back and review your answers to see if they were correct 
And I advise you to do that because you may encounter the same questions or similar questions on the lab exam. So it's always best to find out which questions you got right and which ones you got wrong. So when you look at the quiz the next day after, the, after you're allowed to review it, you'll notice that for instance here I answered incorrectly and then it, down here it tells you the correct answer. All right, so make sure that you check your correct answers. All right, so there it is. That's what you have to do every week. You scroll down to the week in question and you simply complete this list of activities, which includes two quizzes and an assignment that have to be submitted on Wednesday. But you can actually do the work well in advance of the Wednesday. That's totally up to you. How much are these labs worth? As I mentioned before, the total lab is worth 25% of your grade. The, the background video quiz is each background video quiz is worth 0.5% of your grade, which doesn't sound like very much, and it, it isn't, to be honest. The lab protocol quiz, each lab protocol quiz is worth 0.5% of your grade. The worksheet answers are worth 1% of your grade, which means that every lab is worth 2% of your mark. There are nine labs in total for 18% of your mark. And then on, in the last week of lab, which is week 13, we have a lab, quiz, a lab exam, which covers all the material from the whole semester, and that lab exam is worth 7%. So the total lab mark is 25%. Don't forget that you have to pass the lab in order to pass the course. So if you get less than 12.5% of 25%, you will fail the course regardless of how well you did on the lecture section. Okay, so as I said, the lab schedule is flexible because we give you the option of submitting this work anytime on Wednesday. But there is one exception to this, and that's, that is the lab exam. So in week 13, the last week of the semester, we are all going to have to write the lab exam at the same time. Right, so we're, because it's worth a lot of marks, basically. 7% is a lot of marks relative to half a percent for a, for a background quiz. Okay, so generally what happens is we will all write the lab exam on Wednesday, December 1st, but we will write, because there are some students who are in a different time zone, we're going to write the lab exam at two different times. One of them is called the early lab exam, which will be available from midnight until 2 a.m. Vancouver time on Wednesday, December 1st. And the regular lab exam will be available from 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock p.m. Vancouver time. If you, I will be putting everybody into the regular exam time slot by default. If you want to write the early exam, you have to tell me in advance. You have to tell me a couple of days before the lab exam, and then I can put you into the early exam. All right, so just bear in mind that at the end of the semester on December 1st, Wednesday, December 1st, we will all have to, we will all be writing the lab exam at 6 o'clock p.m. Vancouver time unless you want to be included in the early exam, which starts at midnight, 12 a.m. Vancouver time the same day, December 1st. What are we going to be studying this semester? Well, as it turns out, there's no lab in week one. In week two, we have a simple introduction to the safety features in the lab, which is what we would have given to you if you were actually in the lab. So you see where the fire extinguishers are, uh, where you see the, the emergency blanket, the emergency shower, the emergency eye wash station. Uh, and and uh, there's actually a practice quiz during week two. So I would advise you to watch the video write down the answers to the practice questions, and then take the practice quiz and see if you got them correct. Okay, next, week three, we have int introduction to the microscope. In week four, we're doing lab two, which is about something called osmosis. That has to do with uh, water going in or out of cells based on the concentration of solutes that are inside the cell. Uh, that's something that's unique to cell biology. And uh, you will understand what that means once you've gotten into the lecture section of the course. Lab three in week five, we'll be talking about, we'll be doing an experiment regarding enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that catalyze or mediate chemical reactions in the body. 
and they have an optimum, every enzyme has an optimum temperature, an optimum pH, and an optimum substrate concentration. So you'll be doing an experiment to figure out what the optimum pH of human amylase enzymes are. Uh, then you will need graph paper for labs two and three, by the way. So you will need to, if you're unfamiliar with doing a graph, I will be showing you how to do that with a video. But you, you will need to draw a couple of graphs for this course. So you do need to get some graph paper. And then what you're going to do is you'll draw a graph and then you'll take a picture of it with your phone or scan it into your computer and then email it to me so I can give you a mark for your graph. All right, week six, there's no lab because we're giving you the week off so that you can study for the midterms. So the midterm exams for Biology 100 will be held during week six. And then we come back from the midterm exam and we do lab four, which is about the human skeletal system. That's in week seven. And then week five, we do histology. Histology is the study of tissues under the microscope. So you learned how to, do, how to use the microscope. Uh, and so we're looking at, you know, skin tissue versus bone tissue versus brain tissue under the microscope. And week, six, week nine, rather, we'll do lab six on the human digestive system. Week 10, we'll do lab seven on the circulatory system. That includes the heart and the blood vessels. Week uh, 11, we'll be doing lab eight on the respiratory system. That includes the lungs and the trachea, the breathing system, basically. And then lab nine on week 12, that we ha we've had to jam two different human body systems into week 12. The renal system, which is the kidneys, urination, which are responsible for, for uh, sending urine out of the body, and the hum human reproductive system. And then we will have our lab exam on December 1st on the Wednesday of week 13. Thank you very much. I hope this little video gave you an idea of what you're supposed to do every week. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the written forum or you can email me or you can come to the office hour. The first office hour will be on the, on, on Monday the 6th, which is actually a holiday, but I'll, I'll still do the office hour. Uh, so all of you will be invited to that office hour. But I should warn you that I'll be doing an office hour for both Biology 100 and Biology 130. So we'll, there will be some students there asking questions about Biology 100, but there will also be some students there asking about Biology 130 uh, because I'm, I'm combining my, this, this semester what I'm doing is I'm combining office hours for both Biology 100 and Biology 130 to give everyone a chance, everyone more kind of flexibility uh, about when they have to be online in order to ask me questions. So good luck and happy learning. The reason I say happy learning at the end of most of my speeches is because uh, I know some of you are not really interested in biology uh, and you're taking this course as an elective, but uh, I was a student too. And I recall that there were many courses that I had to take as an elective that I couldn't care less about the subject. I wasn't interested in many of the subjects that I studied. But as you get into it, I actually got interested. It's always fun to learn something. It's always fun to learn something that you and very few other people in the world know about. So learning is fun. Gaining knowledge is a thrill. Uh, you just have to be open to the experience. So I hope, you know, even if it's a little bit stressful to, to be studying and to be tested on what you've learned, I understand that. But at the same time, I hope, you know, either now or in the future, you can look back on this course and say, I, I had fun as well. I learned some things that I didn't know. And that kind of expands your view of the world. And it, it, it expands your enjoyment of the world when you understand it. All right. So uh, good luck and happy learning. Thank you very much.